Heading into this Easter 2024 weekend, gold is starting to stair step higher, away from its 2000 fiat Fed note to afford a troy ounce bullion support level. We're about to run through some mass trillions of growing reasons for this. Neighbors up north, their gold spot price has now inched above 3,000 an ounce priced in fiat Canadian dollars. And gold is not only the gold is not the only number heading north and higher. The trend of government central banks opting for gold bullion over further fiat promissory notes is only likely going to continue at record rates given a few of the following facts. Global government debt levels are again exploding higher, substantially larger and taking on faster and nominal size than the post-2008 GFC to 2020 COVID era. The USA is doing its part. Recent U.S. debt issuance levels have spiked to again reach COVID 2020 levels. Late last week, another $1.2 trillion special interest U.S. spending bill was jammed through lawmakers' offices in the wee hours of Saturday morning prior to being coerced into signing in law. Nobody read it. The U.S. Government Accountability Office admitted this week of estimated proper payments by executive branch agencies to the tune of $2.7 trillion over the last two decades. Now, before I boggle our minds with more mind-numbing numbers like this, let me quickly remind ourselves just how ridiculously large the nominal figure of a trillion actually is. It is stacked in fiat U.S. dollar 100 bill notes. According to the Fiat Federal Reserve, there's currently just over $2.3 trillion in physical cash in circulation. That's up 28% since 2020 COVID. Of course, when they admit to, to the broad fiat U.S. dollar issuance supplies outstanding using measures like M2, most of which are digital entries into banks and financial institution ledgers, we can see that the current spot gold price today has to basically double in price just in order to revert back to levels breached in August 2011. It's hard to say if that lower blue line rollover has begun in earnest quite yet, given that every decade or so throughout this full fiat currency era, the broad fiat US dollar M2 currency supply doubles in size. So yeah, think 40 trillion in M2 sometime in the 2030s and where gold might go by then being forced to do so. We now have supposed insiders admitting facts like price inflation has been way worse than collectively lied about over the last few compounding decades and years. Having now devalued the fiat U.S. dollar to 1,2330th an ounce of gold, the fiat Fed research team in Philadelphia decided it's time to remind everyone that gold's useful in stabilizing prices and economies. But what about all the other disgraceful government regimes of the past who did similar to their currency supplies and oversized debt loads? How to work out for them? We're, we put out a note this morning to our subs that the, the debt as a percentage of GDP right now is around 124%. Right. Even at the peak of World War II, it was 119. Right here. It, it, wasn't even, it wasn't even where we are now. And there was a very interesting statistic I read this morning. Uh, since the 1800, there's been um, 52 countries that have had debt to GDP cross above 130%. 51 of those countries have defaulted after that happened. We're within 5% of reaching that 130 mark. And uh, according to the CBO itself, we're actually expected to see debt to GDP at 130 to 150 yeah, this by is, 2050. I mean, yeah. 2050, they're talking like 160. Right. I mean, this is nuts. This is crazy. It's crazy. That's and, economic and suicide. Deficits are growing, uh, especially as a percentage of GDP. And I just think spending is out of control. And Hang on now. Now, who is that one of the 52 countries that didn't yet default, you might wonder? Well, it's the fiat British pound, not sterling, of course. The oldest full fiat currency to still exist and have some relative purchasing power still remaining. See, after loading up on debt to GDP north of 200% after the start of this post-World War II debt super cycle era, they simply let gold price go moon. And to date, their currency has lost over negative 99.75% of its purchasing power to the current fiat British pound price of gold now nearing 1800 an ounce. The United States, for comparison's sake, just passed a negative 99% devaluation to gold. The last negative 1% coming, that's going to be the loudest and most obnoxious of all time for gold. And while physical gold is indeed flowing from West, the United States and the UK mainly, to the East, China and India, is it any wonder that in order to buy their collapsing currency issuances, more time and relative purchasing power existence, the city of London and the comics still represent nearly 90% of notional gold price discovery trading in the first quarter of last year, 2023 globally. Well, time is obviously ticking louder for the next system. 
As on net, central banks continue buying gold bullion in record size. Judge them by their actions. Ignore most of the words. Their apparent collective plan to upend our antiquated fiat financialized system is about to go next level. You see, underlying global payment settlement system, SWIFT, announced this past week that the coming central bank digital currency platform, or CBDC payment settlement system, is going to be ready for launch within the next 12 to 24 months. So good luck to all of us in keeping up with price inflation and digital monetary-based supply metrics after that system kicks on. The effort to devalue record debt and promise pile levels via price inflation galore is the main trick about to be pulled on us all. Of course, consolidation of top-down control being part of the coming plan, too. Bullion is still relatively cheap. Get it while you can. And stick around after this short break. We're about to go over further large inflows into London silver ETFs and refute some of Bloomberg's latest silver misinformation this week. And we'll also further examine the current NYMEX cocoa short squeeze in relation to past 1970 short squeeze of cocoa in the context of gold similar time frame short squeeze. Those charts and historical price data facts will blow your mind. Hello, this is James Anderson on behalf of SD Bullion. Smash the like button if you enjoy these bullion market updates. And be sure to visit sdbullion.com forward slash sweepstakes to enter our free 500 ounce silver coin giveaway. Want to win 500 Silver Tree of Life coins from SD Bullion? Enter and you could be the next lucky receiver of a phone call like this. Hello. Hi, Stuart. This is Dr. Tyler Wall, president and founder of SD Bullion. And I'm calling you to let you know that you won the SD Bullion giveaway of a monster box of 2023 Silver Eagles. Oh my God. <laughs> you got to tell my wife this course. She's not going to believe it, honey. Yes. Okay, doctor, let her know. Yeah, this is Dr. Tyler Wall. I just let you know that you guys won the Munster Box of 2023 Silver Eagles giveaway from SD Bullion. No way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she would never believe me if I told her that I'm online all day long with your website looking for deals. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah, your site's fabulous and your company's fabulous. Well, I appreciate that feedback. And uh, we'll be following up with you shortly on getting your monster box shipped to you. Congratulations again. Thank you, doctor. So click the link below because the next big winner could be you. The silver and gold markets were both up on the week with gold finishing trading with real upside strength to close. The spot gold price closed just above 2,230 an ounce bid while the spot silver price finished near 25 an ounce bid. Given gold's relative strength over silver this week, the spot gold silver ratio climbed to 89. Following up on last week's update of record size inflows into London silver ETFs, an additional plus 8 million ounces of silver bullion flowed into this unsecured silver ETF's London depository late last week. That's over 240 metric tons of silver bullion, or eight times what you see depicted here. Bloomberg was out this week telling potential silver investors to be careful siphoning them into short-term unsecured ETF trade ideas instead of actually buying and owning their silver bullion outright. They even took the occasion of March 27, 1980 Hunt Brothers silver bailout as an occasion to pretend they had their facts in order. We're going to pause as they misrepresent what occurred and clear the record for surely as silver moves back towards 15 ounce in time, the amounts of sheer scapegoat storytelling fables will become innumerable in fiat financialized media parakeet realms. All right, today is the anniversary of Silver Thursday, March 27th, 1980, the day the billionaire Hunt brothers met their comeuppance after trying to corner the commodities market. It was one of the zaniest episodes in financial history, seated all the way back in 1973, when the energy tycoons, Nelson Bunker Hunt and his brothers, Herbert and Lamar, seeking to hedge their oil fortunes from inflation and taxes, began buying silver at around $2 an ounce. And when I say buy silver, I mean buy actual silver. Remember, most commodities traders, they're just buying and selling paper, contracts for the rights to buy something physical. But the Hunts, they wanted that physical bars of silver. They chartered Boeing jetliners to fly the metal to warehouses in Switzerland at least three times. Within seven years, they had stockpiled more than 200 million ounces of silver. That's roughly two thirds of the privately held supply in the world at the time. Whether they tried to corner the silver market is still up for debate, and here are some facts having done years of research on the particular episode in order to learn from their short-sighted mistakes. There was an estimated 12 billion ounces of silver existing above ground at the time. I'm talking about jewelry, antiquities, coins, bars, etc. The Hunts amassed a silver bullion position of some 100 million ounces throughout the 1970s. 
Their mistake was going leverage long on the comics to the tune of about 150 million representative ounces at the time of the January 21st, 1980 comics silver liquidation only rule enforcement, meaning no more going long silver futures contracts. The price could not go higher, only lower. No coincidence, the then price high of both gold and silver followed this COMEX rulebook intervention, and they fell back downwards, culminating into brutal bear markets that lasted more than two decades following. COMEX gold and silver traders likely went over to the NYMEX platinum and palladium pits and kicked off a short squeeze there, those prices peaking only a few months later. CPM Group's Jeffrey Christian covered the 1980 Hunt Brothers story firsthand as a journalist back then, and he stated to me in an interview in 2019 that the hunts likely contributed about 75 cents to a dollar an ounce of that exponential silver price move. So according to him, no, it wasn't a cornering. It instead is a scapegoat fairy tale that fiat financialized powers would probably prefer you believe. I mean, use your own critical thinking skills. From 1978 into 1980, the world witnessed a fiat US dollar quadrupling of crude oil prices a quintupling of platinum prices, a six-folding of palladium prices, and a gold price spike from $100 an ounce in the middle of 1976 to a then record high of 850 ounce by January 21st, 1980, an over 8x move. The hunts had next to nothing to do with the fiat US dollar getting called out by the world's Western financial market at large for overprinting the then exploded fiat US dollar supply outstanding. No, the free market by sheer fear and greed force accounted for the fiat US dollar fraud outstanding at the time, as it likely will in some form or fashion yet again. Prices soared, tripling to $6 an ounce by the end of 1978, then surging to $30 by the end of 1979, peaking a couple weeks later at around $50 in early 1980. On paper, the hunts had made billions off that trade alone. But in response to the concentrated positions, COMEX and the Chicago Board of Trade imposed an emergency margin requirement that would ultimately break that trade. A trade that by then had become kitchen table talk around America. So much so that jeweler Tiffany took out a finger wagging advertisement in the New York Times, calling it unconscionable for anyone to hoard several billion dollars worth of silver and depriving folks of having to pay more for baby spoons, tea sets, and photographic film. That ad, it ran on March 26, 1980. The next day, March 27th, came the margin call. COMEX asked the hunts for $134 million in extra collateral. Now, there are a lot of conflicting reports as to exactly what happened next, but what we do know is ultimately the brothers, who had $4.5 billion in silver holdings, couldn't or at least didn't come up with the cash to pay that margin call, so their broker had no choice but to liquidate. That caused prices to crash 19% that silver Thursday, which still stands as the single biggest daily percentage drop on record. Prices slid 13% more the following Friday, all the way down to $14 an ounce. Fed Chair Paul Volcker, concerned about systemic risk, gave the nod to a group of private banks to lend the hunts a billion dollars to halt the crisis. And there you have it. Wrapped in a bow was the plot line for dozens of magazine articles, Harvard case studies, and lawsuits. In U.S. Senate Banking Committee hearings, which found the following conflicts of interest. Hearings back then held by U.S. Senator William Proxmire's Senate Banking Committee turned up the evidence of conflict of interest on the part of members of the then Comics Exchange and possibly certain members of the CFTC also, based on data provided to the committee by the Commodity Futures Commission trading itself. Proxmire revealed that at least nine of the 23 members of the Board of Governors of the Comics were holding enormous short silver positions, which would have required them to deliver more than 38 million ounces of silver bullion worth about. 1.9 billion in January 1980, when silver was still near its peak. So no Bloomberg, and much less the CFTC powers that claim to be impartial commodity market regulators, you don't get to rewrite fiat financialized history. We know what you did. A federal court in 1988 did find the hunts did attempt to illegally corner the market. That was a ruling that would drive the Hunt brothers into bankruptcy, but they did rebound. While Bunker Hunt was banned from trading commodities, his father's company, Hunt Oil, it did survive, and his brother Herbert became a billionaire all over again after investing in North Dakota shale, and Lamar spent the rest of his years managing his various sports ventures, including the NFL's Kansas City Chiefs. Finally, as promised, the current short squeeze in cocoa has made the price per ton more expensive than the price per ton 
of increasing demand, but still commonplace copper. For the most part, chart criminals seem to prefer posting shorter term price history charts in order to elicit social media clicks like they're pumping some insider crypto coin amongst themselves. Instead, I'd like you to take a look at cocoa prices on a full fiat currency era timeline so you can better understand how gold performed over a similar time frame. Moving in a tenfold fashion, trough to peak during the 1970s, with an interim bear market in between, still five folding after the fact, Coco made a major move in the 1970s. And the latest move for Coco is another five-fold move over a relatively short time frame. But zoom out and let's compare it in terms of gold over the 1970s. Gold ran a more than 20-fold, moving slightly longer in time span than the Coco move, and no, the world did not end. And the Swiss are still refining gold to ship off mostly to the Eastern world at the moment, and they're still producing some of the best chocolate bars we can hardly afford to buy anymore. The point is, every commodity market from time to time does this bull market blast off. Gold is apparently beginning its final bull market phase that threatens to become a global mania before it peaks out in relative value terms. Uh, the financial media at large is still trying to ignore it, which is great. And yeah, the world will likely go on with those holding bullion from here to there, happy they did so prudently with direct ownership. That will be all for our weekly SD Bullion Market Update. Happy Easter to those of you out there celebrating the holiday. And as always, to you out there, take great care of yourselves and those you love. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button and share it with those you love. Subscribe to our channel and hit that alert button so you know when we publish new Bullion Market Updates.